Thanks. Um, so I'm Samantha Payne, and I co-founded a robotics company called Open Bionics. Um, we 3D print robotic hands for amputees that are open source, super lightweight, and really affordable. Our mission is to democratize assistive technologies. Um, so we're starting with the bionic hand, um, but we want to create all, all sorts of robotic technologies that can assist the human body. And we're doing it differently. So we turn disabilities into superpowers. Um, we've been working on this, um, the, on this business for around two years, and we've gained a lot of attraction for our ideas. Um, last year, we won the James Dyson Award for Innovati Innovative Engineering. Um, we, won, we won Best Product Innovation at CES. And um, we've been na named um, one of the top 10 most innovative robotics companies in the world. Um, and like I said, we're, we're doing it different. And one of the biggest differences about our companies is that we are open source. So we share all of our code and 3D files. Does anyone in the room recognize this picture? Put your hand up if you know what this is. It was a really big news story last year. No one knows. Okay. Oh, yeah, OK, good. Some people. So this, this is um, the first 3D file ever sent to space. So this existed purely as a 3D file on Earth, and then it was sent to the International Space Station, where they 3D printed a tool. Um, and not to one-up NASA or anything, but we've sent a, a bionic limb via email. Um, so this is Taylor, and he lost his limbs in Afghanistan. Um, and he found our, our work online, um, downloaded his own hand from the internet, and then 3D printed it in his garage at home with his friend. Um, he did this because bionic limbs weren't giving him the functionality that he wanted, and so he started building his, his own. So the really cool thing about being open source is that um, you have this amazing ability to accelerate the technology because suddenly you have engineers all over the world and amputees willing to take your ideas, improve them, and share them back into the community. So if you were born without a hand or you lost a hand, you would go to the hospital, um, they would take a plaster cast of your limb, and then you would wait around three months to get a custom uh, prosthetic arm. Usually that would be a hand that had one degree of freedom, like a gripper, or a hook, or a cosmetic hand that looks like a human limb, but it doesn't really do anything. We're changing this whole process by using the latest 3D technologies. So we would meet with an amputee, 3D scan their limb, um, use that 3D model to create a custom socket and a hand, and then 3D print it. So the process that currently takes um, clinicians three months, um, we've been able to build a custom multi-grip bionic hand for an amputee within five days. So it's a huge time, time reduction um, by using these new technologies. We also don't design for amputees. We design with amputees because we believe in co-design. Um, and we've tested with around eight amputees with actual prototypes. But we've spent months and months speaking to hundreds of amputees to find out more about the problems with prosthetic limbs. And this led to us reimagining what the human hand could be, what, the, what a bionic hand could be, how it could look, um, and what functionalities it, it could have. Because if you get to build your own bionic limb, why would you limit yourself to just this sort of functionality? So last year, we teamed up with the Walt Disney Company to turn children with limb differences into bionic superheroes. Um, and so I'm really excited to say that we are the, going to be the first company in the world to take Iron Man's hand and turn it to, into an actual bionic limb for a child, um, and the Disney Frozen hand, and uh, a Star Wars lightsaber hand. And the cool thing, another cool thing about this is that these aren't just pretty renders. We've actually built them and tested them with children. So this is Logan, um, and he is 10 years old. And he's currently in Luke Skywalker mode. So his lightsaber is blue at the moment. <coughs> um, and in here, it's, it's green. And so he can switch between Star Wars characters and choose which lightsaber he wants to have that day. And it also has um, an accelerometer. 
So when he like, thrashes his arm around, the lightsaber flickers as if it was a real lightsaber. Um, he got really into character and started like, force choking his sister, but it was okay because he didn't mean it. Um, we also tested with Sydney, um, and this is the Iron Man hand from Stark Industries, um, complete with repulsor uh, blaster and, and lights that shoot up the arm. And so these were our first two children that we got to turn into bionic superheroes. Um, and this test was really amazing because the impact in just one day of testing it had on their personalities and how empowered they felt to like, run around and show people their limb instead of maybe being shy about what, what was different about them, it became like, something really cool. Um, so if, if they, they wanted to take their bionic limb to school instead of just sort of shove it in their bag or, or hide it. And it's not just for children. Um, we're working with lots of companies on designs. This is the DSX Adam Jensen arm from the, from the video game. Um, and so this arm is, is the actual character's arm. So this is the exact 3D model. So in a fictional universe, a character would wear this. Um, and now we're building it for a human to wear in real life. From the same video game, this is the Titan arm. And what we were trying to do here was build a couture arm, something that was really fashionable, desirable, something that you could see walking down New York Fashion Week. And again, we've built them and tested them. Um, this is Catherine, who's, who's 24. And she had quite a traumatic experience growing up being limb different. Um, she actually hid her arm and, and continued to in, into adulthood because she didn't want people to see her difference. Um, but when she was wearing the Titan arm, she was showing people how it worked, she enjoyed the attention, and she really liked the style of it. Um, and this is Dan, and I'm gonna invite Dan up to come say hello. So Dan is wearing the Adam Jensen arm. Thanks. <laughs> So Dan, do you want to tell the audience a little bit about your experience with prosthetics? Yeah, so basically, um, when I was a kid, I was only born my left hand, as you can probably tell right now, me wearing this awesome arm. Uh, and basically, I used to have some prosthetics that didn't really do anything for me, and I, I kind of fell out of love with the whole prosthetics side of things, because you want it to look really awesome. And uh, for many years, I kind of just, it was either, if I wanted to buy on a can, it was far too expensive. Um, and because being a geek and into sci-fi and stuff, I was always like, I really want to have a really cool arm. And then one day I stumbled across these guys and I ended up help testing and uh, I get to test awesome arms like this. And it's been, ever since it's been mind, uh, mind blowing and life changing, so yeah. So Dan has been testing with us for two years um, and the arm works by, there's, there's muscle sensors on the inside of his socket. They're called EMG sensors. So when he squeezes his muscles, he can open and close the hand. We've just um, done a software upgrade, so he can't show you the full functionality. But the hand open and closes. Um, it does a pinch grip and a tripod grip and individual finger movement. Um, and we're, we're going to be here um, for the rest of the afternoon. And so if you have any questions about the, the technology or, or what we do, um, we'd be really happy to meet you and, and have a chat. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.